my mother, um, she has a, a near-death experience story to tell. Um, when she was in her mid-twenties, I guess, when she was, she was in between careers studying, she had quit uh, being a teacher and she was studying to be a nurse. And um, she was driving along in a van, I think, uh, I guess to the place where she studied. And uh, I think she drove down a little, an area where there was a Ford maybe across the, the road. I, I can't remember the full details, but another car was coming in the opposite direction. And somehow ran her car off the road. And yeah, so she was in a pretty bad accident. Um, and she really hurt her neck. She's still got a pretty bad neck today, but um, yeah, she really hurt her neck at the time in this accident. I think she had whiplash or whatever. I think she broke her collarbone as well. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, the, the main point of the, her story is that um, when the ambulance came, uh, they put her into the ambulance. She was fully conscious. She wasn't unconscious at all. Um, but yeah, for some reason when she was in the ambulance as they were driving along, just checking on her, um, yeah, she had this, she had, she was suddenly conscious that she was on the roof, on the ceiling of the ambulance looking down at her self from the top of the ambulance. Um, and she was able to hear everything that the people were saying, the paramedics. And she heard one of the paramedics say to the other, I can't find a pulse. And then that was the end of her out-of-body experience. She was back in her body and conscious again. So yeah, this was my mother's story. She's told me and my other siblings that story many times. So I've got no reason to doubt, you know, what she says. Yeah, I, I guess I remembered this story because the other day I was talking to my mother. She's getting on, you know, she's 72 or whatever, 73. And uh, we were talking about Christians, I think, and how they try to force force their religion onto other people. And she was going on in her usual way, you know, that you know, she's pretty anti-religious, anti-religion. And I said and I said to my mother, I said, Oh, don't be so harsh on on Christians, you know, trying to push their religion onto people. It's just that they're scared of death, you know. And somehow pushing their religion onto others somehow validates their religion, I guess. And yeah, so, and then she asked me, well, what do you think, um, well, what do you think happens when we die? Because, you know, we, me and my mother occasionally have, I guess, philosophical type conversations. Um, yeah, and I, I told her, you know, I said, well, you know, that, well, most people would define death as uh, the end of consciousness, the end of subjective consciousness, and the continuation of the physical world. That's what most, uh, I guess, modern atheists would define death as. The physical world, of course, goes on, you know, matter, everything, how it works, um, the earth, the sun, you know, other things, other people, other bodies go on as normal. Uh, 
what does stop existing is the subjective experience of the person. And yeah, so I said to her, well, most people, most atheists, let's forget religious people and people that believe in a spirit world for the moment, most people that believe in a physical world and possibly a, a conscious world that's generated from a physical body, uh, a physical brain, most people believe that the physical world continues, uh, it's just the consciousness that ceases to exist. So a body, for example, uh, the matter that makes up that body, the matter that makes up a brain, that continues, it doesn't disappear. Um, it rots away in the ground, turns into dirt, you know, changes, molecular, the molecular structure of it changes, but it is still matter. The matter doesn't stop existing. What stops existing is that which was generated by that matter, uh, i.e. consciousness. And I said to my mother, well, the reason why I don't accept that idea is that the only thing that, that we can be certain of, the only thing that I'm certain of, is uh, consciousness, my own subjective consciousness. That's what I'm certain of. Um, the physical world beyond that, which I supposedly perceive, is secondary. It's something that I assume. Um, something that I assume exists. So. I said to my mother, how can something that I'm less certain of, i.e. the physical world, how can that outlive um, that which I'm more certain of, i.e. my conscious world? How is that possible? I mean, I guess it's possible, but is, is it logical to assume that that's going to happen? Um, I, don't, I don't deny that it's possible. Certainly, yeah, that could happen. That could exist. That situation could be. But it doesn't make sense to me to to put something, it's sort of like putting the cart before the horse. You're sure of something, but you assume that that's something that you're more sure of will, um, will die, and that something that you're less certain of will continue on forever, possibly. So yeah, that was my that was my explanation of what I kind of believe. I don't like to use that word. And I explained to her that, that I've, that the most, the sanest, rationalist, most logical way to be, I believe, in life is to accept and to rest upon, um, to settle on, that which we are most certain of. And what we are most certain of is our own subjective consciousness. That's which we are, what we are most certain of. And from that, I guess, springs this um, idea that uh, death, I guess, is not necessarily something to be feared because it does not seem logical that consciousness will cease to exist at the point of death.